and hello again living the God life today's video is about two things it is a secret unveiled which is very quick and simple and then it is about the Word of God the name of God and the Bible and the two do relate to each other so the secret unveiled wasn't by me it was by AJ Miller as far as I know and it is that you can feel truth although I had heard something like this before from uh, the Rastafarian religion um, one of their people had said you know there's information floating all around and the truth hits you and magic flows through you now that's something I didn't understand at all at the time but I do now so what can happen is you can um, come across stumble across or if you're seeking you can find a big truth and it will have a palpable effect on your entire body now it's not absolutely foolproof because there are other things that can make you feel things in your body and at the beginning when you're just searching out discovering this new secret about how things make you feel when you hear them you can be fooled but you will eventually get there and truth is so important it is the foundation upon which love sits as far as I can see of our understanding and you know our existence in the last four billion years has all been culminating towards this point where we can become aware of what we truly are and understand it now here's a little simple example of where does the truth sit does it sit in your mind or does it sit somewhere else now everyone can have an occasion where they've momentarily forgotten someone's name and then you're searching in you're kind of searching in your mind what's their name what's their name and then a name comes into your head now at that point it's just a name there's no recognition yet if that is the right name or not and it happens very very quickly you do a quick check is that the name I'm looking for and you get an answer now where does that come from it comes from your core it comes from deep within so you've got to become more sensitive to it but you can definitely notice that you feel truth you know when something is true now in order to understand things and perhaps communicate you can't do it necessarily with the heart so you know we've been putting things into words trying to explain how we feel and all these sorts of things with some success I'd say but there's a whole load of uh, things that have you know stumbling blocks that have been put there to make it difficult <laughs> so that we know for sure perhaps and this is what I'm going to go into now okay so just to summarize on that um, secret the universe unveiled by AJ Miller and others and I've spent the last few years proving it you can feel truth <coughs> Luke 315 the people were on the tiptoe of expectation all wondering about John whether perhaps he was the Messiah but he spoke out and said to them all I baptize you with water, but there is one to come who is mightier than I. I am not fit to unfasten his shoes. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His shovel is ready in his hand to winnow his threshing floor and gather the wheat into his granary, but he will burn the chaff on a fire that can never go out. His shovel is ready in his hand to winnow his threshing floor and gather the wheat into his granary but he will burn the chaff on a fire that can never go out. Now that is a prophecy. But why, why use that example? You've taken your, your, the, the product of your growth, you know, because he does explain how it is, well, Yeshu explains how um, bad people came in and sowed among the wheat, the chaff. So there is this 
this act that has happened. You know, we're, we're all concerned with truth here and, you know, we've got this book and there'll be so many people who will just say, stick to the scripture, you know, that is your truth. But has it, has it been adulterated by some evil to cause stumbling blocks and everything else? So I'd say yes, absolutely. Now, the common sort of understanding of this this prophecy is is that it's the good people and the bad people. Like, you know, the bad people are going to get burned in a fire that never goes out, and 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 the good people will go into the granary. Well, the way I interpret this is the f the threshing floor is the mind. So. It's, it's, you know, in anybody in discerning truth, you, you've got your mind there and you're, you're thinking, you know, what's what, right? That is your threshing floor. And you're going to take the good stuff and you're going to keep on to that. You're going to keep that. That's yours. That truth. I'll keep that truth. Because that truth will guide me through all the things I need to do. And the rest of it, the chaff, can be gone forever, I never want to know about it. So it is this book. This book is the wheat and the chaff. And, you know, the truth just can't be given to you, like, oh, because it's written on a the page, then it's true, then I'll believe it. You have to train your own discernment, train your own threshing floor by experience, you know. It's something that interests you, a new truth, like about reality and everything else go and run with it for a bit see how see how it affects your life see how it affects the decisions you make okay john, john. so that one, is one about the bible when, when all things, things began, began the, the word, word already was the, the word, word dwelt with, with god. god and what god was the, the word, word was the word then was with God at the beginning, and through him all things came to be. No single thing was created without him. All that came to be was alive with his life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines on in the dark, and the darkness has never mastered it. John 1 6 There appeared a man named John, sent from God. He came as a witness to testify to the light, that all might become believers through him. He was not himself the light, he came to bear witness to the light. The real light, which enlightens every man, was even then coming into the world. John 1.10 He was in the world, so what is the, the world? world, though it owed its being to him, did not recognize him. He entered his own realm, and his own would not receive him. But to all who did receive him, to those who have yielded him their allegiance, he gave the right to become children of God not born of any human stock, or by the fleshly desire of a human father, but the offspring of God himself. So the word became flesh. He came to dwell among us, and we saw his glory, such glory as befits the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John 17:15. Yeshua is speaking as though to the Father. I pray thee not to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are strangers in the world, as am I. Consecrate them by the truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world, and for their sake, I now consecrate myself, that they too may be consecrated by the truth. 
Thy word is truth. Consecrate, make or declare sacred. So truth is sacred. Well, they become sacred because of truth. He makes himself sacred so that they may be sacred by the truth. But thy word is truth. He's talking to his father. Thy word is truth. The word of God is truth. So we could put truth into... When all things began, the truth already was. The truth dwelt with God and what God was. The truth was. The truth, then, was with God at the beginning, and through him all things came to be. But to all who did receive him, to those who have yielded him their allegiance, he gave the right to become children of God. Not born of any human stock or by the fleshly desire of a human father, but the offspring of God himself. So we have that right in life. I mean, we are children of God, but until you know it, are you? So the word became flesh. The truth became flesh. Now this is the bit that they all take to, um, to mean Yeshua, that he was God on earth. He came to dwell among us and we saw his glory. Such glory as befits the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. So as they say they're the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. He just said that all have the right to become children of God. So maybe he was the only one who knew, therefore was, at the time. Or whether the, the Greek translators at that time... And I've noticed this in the Bible quite a lot, that it will say something that really rings true to then sort of calm it down a bit, to take the edge off it, to say something else that, because it doesn't fit in with what they understood. And that, you know, is in the Bible a lot. And that's true too. So now we're moving on to the name of God. There's the name of God and there is the word of God. <clears throat> so, we need to get some clues here because obviously, by, again, it's written it's in the Greek, all this New Testament was in the Greek, and they've called Yeshua Jesus constantly. Luke 9, 49 Master, said John, we saw a man driving out devils in your name, but as he is not one of us, we tried to stop him. Jesus said to him, Do not stop him, for he who is not against you is on your side. Mark 9:38. John said to him, Master, we saw a man driving out devils in your name, and as he was not one of us, we tried to stop him. Jesus said, Do not stop him. No one who does a work of divine power in my name will be able the next moment to speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is on our side. I tell you this, if anyone gives you a cup of water to drink because you are followers of the Messiah, that man assuredly will not go unrewarded. So he's saying, my name, my name, my name, right? Just, I know, like, if I said, well, my name is Stephen, right? My name is Stephen. But if uh, I had invented a name that did amazing things, I might also call it my name. That's, that's my name. I made up that. Oh, that's my invention. John 17, 9. He's talking to the Father with his disciples present. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom thou hast given me, because they belong to thee. 
All that is mine is thine, and what is thine is mine, and through them has my glory shone. I am to stay no longer in the world, but they are still in the world, and I am on my way to thee. Holy Father, protect by the power of thy name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. When I was with them, I protected by the power of thy name those whom thou hast given me, and kept them safe. Not one of them is lost except the man who must be lost, for scripture has to be There is a hallowed name. So are there two names that can heal? Are there two names with power or is there one name? And as Yeshua says a lot, you know, I'm in you and you're in me and, you know, like, like that. And, and Yeshua is channeling. He's channeling a lot, which I think you can detect in some of the verses I've put here. So there is a hallowed name, it's got power, and, and let's face it, you know, everybody loves that name Jesus. It doesn't seem to work when it's said the Spanish way. You know, it doesn't have its thing, and, and also this thing about the letter J, you know, which they didn't have a sound for that in Hebrew or Greek. There was no letter that signified that J, J, J sound. So the J letter was invented. And the symbol for Christ in Greek is an X and a P. Now that could have been the invented Greek letter for that to make that sound. And then the, the, the French took it on, you know, because after Yeshua was crucified, Mary went to the south of France and they were carrying on the teachings in the south of France. And oh, they took on that letter J and look how many things end up getting, beginning with J, John, Jerusalem, you know, all, so much, right? Jeremiah, people whose names were never beginning with J, now begin with J, you know, this surge of using this letter. Jesus, G Jesus, but I, Jesus, See, for me in my own life, there was a time, and then I was about uh, yeah, 30, uh, kicked out of my house. My son was only seven months old or something. And I was, I had to get this bed sit, and it was horrible, it was damp, there was mould growing up the walls. And um, I thought, you know, I was in a low place and I lay back on the bed and there were the spotlights in the room so the lights were really bright and for some reason the word just came into my head Jesus and I felt this feeling and it was really really nice and so at that time I had I watched Dan Brown's stuff so I would thought yeah Jesus was just a normal bloke and you know so that did confuse me why that name was there and then later on because I made videos years ago about why we were talking about Jesus why don't we talk about God <clears throat> and gradually dawned on me there's something in this name anyone named their child Jesus in this country would be weird I just it just you know more likely you know name their children Adolf or something you know than they just wouldn't do that. But look in Islam, they're, they're prophet. They're, loads of people are called Muhammad, right? But, you know, we, we will not give any person that name, Jesus, because it's, they must recognize the truth is in them, telling them, you know, don't do that because that's the name of God. Just to sum up, the name of God is Jesus. And it is important how you pronounce it, you know, that's what's important in a name. If someone, if my name's written down and someone reads it as... Stepan! <laughs> or something, you know. 
the new you know change it completely and I can't even understand it I didn't think someone just said my name unless they say it like Stephen then I'll be like Poo, I hear that so there's power in the name Jesus and it's Jesus it's the name of God it's the name they were healing in that Yeshua was healing in and um, the word of God is truth so that's just a little cryptic puzzle in John 1 1 the word of God the word is truth truth is sacred it's so important it's the basis for your understanding and the Bible is not the word of God therefore the Bible is more like the wheat and chaff and just because it's written down doesn't mean it's the truth you're gonna have to use your own threshing floor and your own winnowing fork and everyone's gonna have to do that for themselves it's good to get a little help though from other people listen to what other people say and treat every all information like that you and your threshing floor you know and sometimes you do discard truth that later on you realize is true don't worry it's all part of the path so that's it okay thank you bye John 5.30 Yeshua is in a public place. I cannot act by myself. I judge as I am bidden. And my sentence is just, because my aim is not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I testify on my own behalf, that testimony does not hold good. There is another who bears witness for me, and I know that his testimony holds. Your messengers have been to John. You have his testimony to the truth. Not that I rely on human testimony, but I remind you of it for your own salvation. John was a lamp, burning brightly, and for a time you were ready to exult in his light. But I rely on a testimony higher than John's, there is enough to testify that the Father has sent me in the works my Father gave me to do and to finish, the very works I have in hand. This testimony to me was given by the Father who sent me. Although you never heard his voice or saw his form, but his word has found no home in you, for you do not believe the one whom he sent. You study the scriptures diligently, supposing that in having them you have eternal life. Yet although their testimony points to me, you refuse to come to me for that life. I do not look to men for honour, but with you it is different, as I know well, for you have no love for God in you. I have come accredited by my Father and you have no welcome for me. If another comes self-accredited, you will welcome him. How can you have faith so long as you receive honour from one another and care nothing for the honour that comes from him who alone is God? Do not imagine that I shall be your accuser at the Father's tribunal. Your accuser is Moses, the very Moses on whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe what I tell you, for it was about me that he wrote. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how are you to believe what I say?